Have you seen this presentation about innovation at Google? Google's a great example for people interested in innovation because they do many things right as well as wrong. They create a lot of great innovations, but mostly through brute force and a lot of luck. By examining Google, I hope to show you how to achieve the greatest possible innovation success. If you haven't read my blog, then you might be asking, who are you and why should I listen to what you have to say? Well, fair enough. For over 25 years, I've helped create and bring to market dozens of innovations worth billions of dollars. Through my experience, I discovered a system to reliably create targeted, high-value innovations on demand using resources you already have or are easy to acquire. And I have a special connection to Google. Larry Page, one of the founders of Google, attended the University of Michigan. He was an undergrad there while I was preparing for a PhD in a new area of information theory. He used some of the exact same techniques I helped develop when he started Google. In 1992, before there was such a thing as the web, I was at Apple writing white papers describing what the web would look like and how to build it. Some of that work led to the software development methodology called Agile. Many software developers use Agile with great success, and Google's one of them. In 1994, years before the founders of Google even met, I was implementing the first use of the web at Hewlett Packard. We already knew that search was a major concern, and we solved the problem internally at HP by using the Topic Real-Time Engine. This is the same technology the CIA used to scan and categorize millions of documents per second. One of the insights we implemented was sharing search criteria so people could benefit from the human contribution to search. This is the exact same innovation, although implemented differently, that launched Google. So that should answer a little bit about my understanding of the web, search, and why what I have to say about innovation will help you achieve your greatest success. Now check out this clip. It's an innovation home run. If you do a query, what is Winston Churchill's birthday, you ought to get a date back, not just a web page. If you do a query that says, where is Google headquarters, you should get a map back, not just a Google page. Sometimes comprehensiveness means more than just web pages. And if you think about those examples I just gave you, it's relevance is also important. Relevance is the second component we talk about in sort of overall search. Relevance is a term of art, meaning that the results that appear close to the top are actually what you meant. So, let's, so notice what I just said, what you meant. Our goal is to have the top result be not just what you asked for, but what you should have asked for, what you really meant. Let me give you an example. If you do a query, you do a search for the word A-P-P-L-E-S, the word apples, you're going to get a bunch of results back, including stuff on fruit and all kinds of different stuff. If you do a search for A-P-P-L-E, apple, you're going to get another set of results back, mostly about a computer manufacturer. Because our automated and objective algorithms have figured out that users, when they do a search for Apple, are more often looking for a computer manufacturer, now a phone manufacturer or a MP3 player manufacturer, than they are for fruit. This is a really good example of outcome-based innovation. The customer doesn't care how you do it. They just want the results they desire. Inventions are about how, but innovations are about what customers want. The best definition of innovation is satisfy customers' unmet desires. When you get the definition of innovation correct, you suddenly see where a lot of confusion comes from and how to fix it. Douglas says there's three types of innovations, incremental, incremental with side effects, and transformational. That's nonsense. Customers don't care about those distinctions, and neither should you. All customers care about is how well their desires are met, period. As an innovator, all you should care about is how well and how many customers you can satisfy for the least cost and effort. Sometimes the so-called transformational innovations are the cheapest and easiest way to get the greatest return on investments. And other times, the small improvements are the way to go. But that's more of a strategy decision than anything fundamental about innovation. But for you to make those strategy decisions, you need to know all the possible innovations for your industry. And the only way that can be done is using the predictive innovation method. 
You can find out more about that on my blog or at predictiveinnovation.com. Another quote from the presentation is, innovation for its own sake isn't useful. The heart of that statement is absolutely correct. If a change doesn't satisfy customers' unmet desires, then it's not innovation. It might be an invention, but it does not innovate. If it fails to satisfy a customer's unmet desires, it's just not innovation. Ideas that could be innovations still can fail because of poor implementation. So, innovation is more than just ideas. Innovation is thinking plus doing. In fact, there are seven essential elements to a complete innovation system, and idea formation isn't even the first step. Here's the biggest mistake most people make when they talk about innovation. They say, users don't know what they want. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Users know exactly what they want. What they don't know is how to get it. If a user expresses a problem to you, they tell you, I want this, you gave me that, and that's not what I want. Customers are trying to achieve some goal, and there's certain outcomes that must occur for that goal to be achieved. That's what they want, each one of those outcomes satisfied. And in the biggest picture, what they'd really like is